Yay Networks. Hi there, I'm Mia Sanchez, and you may recognize me as Miss USA and first runner-up at Miss Universe. Well, there is so much more to me than the sash, the crown, the dresses, the chicken cutlets, and the butt glue. Yep, that's a real thing, and we'll get into that later. I am a fourth degree black belt, a women's self-defense instructor, a mother, and a wife to my amazing co-host, Daniel Bucco. We are keeping it real as we dig into relationships, parenting, confidence, self-defense, travel, all the joys and struggles that come with living this beautiful thing we call life. So pull up a chair and throw your hair in a messy bun as we chat with all types of life experts. So make sure to like, follow, subscribe, and look out for Hold My Crown wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Hey there, welcome back. We are here with the Hold My Crown podcast. I'm so glad that you are here listening and hanging out. Today is a solo episode. Oh my goodness. I think this is my first solo episode. Daniel has been with me on every single episode. He is at work right now. So today we are talking all about postpartum experiences. I have a few very specific things that I want to talk about and then also answer some of your questions. When it comes to my postpartum experience, I want to share with you I want to share with you some of the hard things that I've experienced, but in an easy to digest way. I feel like when I was pregnant, people would tell me their horror stories in a way that was negative and not something that I needed to hear or receive. But I do feel like I'm in a place where I've experienced hard things. I've come out the other side and I can share it in a way that can be helpful and relatable and Um, maybe help you get through it, whether you're experiencing it now or you are pregnant or want to have kids someday, or you have a best friend that's pregnant or a best friend that's freshly had a baby and you want to be there for them. I want to explain things in a way that will help you relate to it, understand it, and not be afraid of it because we go through so much as women, the ups and the downs and the great moments and the scary moments, but we always come out the other side. We always come out with a beautiful child and looking back on those memories and we made it, you know, we made it. So a few of the things that I want to share when it comes to my experience, one is something that I have literally never heard about. I don't hear anyone talking about it on the internet, which I think social media is a great place where people are opening up about their experiences. I've never heard anybody talk about prenatal depression, um, postpartum depression, which I know we've all heard about at this point, and kind of baby blues, postpartum anxiety. There's a lot of things that come along with being pregnant and postpartum. Our hormones I think I'm going to have to, again, confirm this statistic. I'll look it up in just one second. But the hormonal drop that women experience post-birth is the, I think, the largest like hormonal drop that anyone experiences ever in their entire life. Uh, all that to say, I think that's what I was trying to get to. Postpartum is a wild ride. It's a beautiful ride. We have all these moments with our babies, but we also have just hard moments that I want to talk about and crazy things like right now, actually, before we go to the ad break really quick, right now, nine months postpartum, I've had babies for nine months. My body knows what to do. This has been my second time having babies. I am dealing with mastitis right now, y'all. And it has been an entire weekend thing. I'm still currently experiencing it. I need to call my doctor right after I get off of this podcast and get some antibiotics. What I'm experiencing are chills. I woke up at 2.30 a.m. one morning, two nights ago, shivering, like in my sleep so much that it woke me up so freezing cold. I took a hot bath at 3 a.m. because I couldn't get warm no matter how many layers I put on. I then got out of that hot bath. And of course, my baby woke up like 10 minutes later at 4 a.m. Then I had the whole like sweats and body aches and obviously the tenderness of the breast where everything is just so uncomfortable. And that is usually something you experience shortly after having a baby. But I'm experiencing it nine months postpartum because my body is just, you know, having fun with me. It's something that I have learned how to address. I will share that with you. So this podcast, I'm not just going to tell you like, oh, here's all the bad things that have happened to me. I'm going to share it in a way where you can gain knowledge and I'm going to give you tips and tricks from my personal experiences that have helped me. 
as we get into this, I want to say this is not medical advice. I'm just sharing with you what works for me and hopefully it will help you. Obviously, if it's something that's like, you know, I'm taking sunflower lectin to help with the mastitis, check with your doctor. Most people it works great for, but obviously those kind of things check with your doctor. Other than that, it's like, hey, take a warm Epsom salt bath and do this and do that. And it's all just like natural things that can help our bodies. Okay, let's take a little break and we'll come right back and get into the meat of the show. Life is wild, you guys. Okay, so I am always trying to figure out what to eat when we are on the go and running around with all three kids. And I love when we get a factor meal delivery because all I have to do is pull the meal out of the fridge, pop it in the microwave, and I have fresh food And I'm giving nutrients to my body because that's what I need to chase after all three kids that we have. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Tailored to your schedule, customize your weekly meals with the flexibility to get as much or as little as you need. Pause or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. Factor is your solution for fast premium meals without the need for cooking. We're celebrating Earth Day all month long. Look out for the Earth Month Eats badge on the menu for our lowest carbon footprint meals. Y'all, I truly love Factor meals and the convenience that it brings to my life, especially with all three little kids. You can head to factormeals.com slash holdmycrown50 and use code Hold my crown 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's incredible. That's code hold my crown 50 at factormeals.com slash hold my crown 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Welcome back from the break, you guys. I have some statistics with me that are from the CDC and the Mayo Clinic about prenatal depression, prenatal depression, postpartum depression, and those together, the prenatal and postnatal term terms are all encapsulated under perinatal. We're going to talk about those separately though. I hope I'm making sense and we're not getting too confusing. So let's start with postpartum depression. Just a little statistic here. The CDC says that about one in eight women with a recent live birth experience symptoms of postpartum depression. So interesting. One in eight. That's a lot. And then when it comes to perinatal depression, which is what I had never heard of. No, prenatal, which I had never heard of. It's something that I experienced. It says that about 7% of women experience depression during pregnancy, and that's from the Mayo Clinic. These facts are crazy. I feel like the one in eight is so high and 7% is still a high number, but I had never heard anybody talk about it. So quickly, I'll share with you my experience and then I'll share with you some things that have helped me and then we'll answer some questions from Instagram. So first things first, when I was pregnant with Asher, beautiful time. I had a great pregnancy. I love being pregnant in general, like physically, I get skinny, but like grow a healthy baby, you know, I'm like feeling good, looking good. And my body is doing really great. The only things I experienced symptom wise, and people like, Ooh, what are your pregnancy symptoms were dizziness every once in a while, I would just stand up too quick and get like a head rush and have to sit back down. I experienced a little bit of nausea. And one like, terrible, funny, fun fact is, you know, people get nausea from foods or this or that. I didn't have any of those things where sense would make me too sick. I would get sick from my own bad breath, (laughs) which is so bad. But like I would wake up in the morning and I would smell my own breath and I would be nauseous. That was the only thing that really made me sick. So I was constantly doing mouthwash or brushing my teeth because my bad breath made me feel nauseous when I was pregnant. I can't believe it. Thank goodness that's not the case anymore. And I still obviously brush my teeth and use mouthwash a lot, but it was to the point where I would feel sick over it. Um, 
those were the main symptoms. Otherwise, I was healthy. I was strong. I didn't really work out my entire pregnancy with Asher. I just walked a lot. I was pregnant kind of towards the end of the pandemic. So we were walking. We were moving, but I was not working out, doing strength training how I thought I would be. The first trimester had me slow down a lot with just being more like I wouldn't say faint, just like more tired. I was exhausted because I was grow growing a baby. The, the walking around was all that I could really do during my pregnancy with Asher. So cut to second trimester. Everyone says the second trimester is the best time of any pregnancy. You have a cute little bump. You're not nauseous anymore. You feel strong and healthy and you're not too big like you are in the third trimester where you're starting to waddle around. So I'm in the golden zone of pregnancy, right? I start getting these insane bouts of like sadness and for no reason, like logically, I would sit on the couch and just cry for no reason. I would tell Daniel he'd be there. He'd be comforting me and you know, he's experienced depression and anxiety in his life. So he, you know, has a good understanding and knows how to be supportive. And so he's there being an ear for me to share my, my feelings with. And I just couldn't stop crying. And there was no reason I would tell him I'm happy. Like mentally, when I'm thinking about my circumstances, I am grateful. I have a healthy baby. I have a healthy pregnancy. I have an amazing husband, a beautiful home. Like it was beautiful weather. Like everything was good. And I could not stop crying. Um, I just felt sad. And that's when I knew it was something really chemical and not it wasn't something that was circumstantial. I wasn't sad because of something that I was experiencing in my life. I was just, I just had this deep, like dark feeling of sadness and I didn't know why. And I felt like I was constantly walking around on the verge of tears. And it would sometimes be a feeling that I carried with me all day. And I felt like I didn't even want to get out of bed. And then there would be times that it was momentary where I would be happy and normal and it would hit me like a bus and it would be overwhelming and I would burst into tears for no reason. Um, it was heavy and sad and I had never heard anybody else, not one person on social media, talk about prenatal depression. Um, I actually opened up and shared with one of my best friends, Allie, and she shared with me that her sister had experienced it as well. And that was the first time I didn't feel alone. I felt so alone experiencing this because no one I knew had ever shared with me or on social media that it was something that was out there. I thought there was something wrong with me. I thought that I was broken. I just had so many like heavy thoughts around it, even though if I took a moment to zoom out, I would think about all the things there are to be grateful for in those moments. I would just feel so overwhelmed emotionally. So I want to share this part of my personal experience, my personal story. If you're listening to this and you are pregnant or you have a partner that is pregnant or a best friend or someone in your life that is feeling sad, it's important to know that they are not alone and this is normal and you will get through it. Things that helped me. I would journal and I would write a gratitude list. I would write a list of things that I'm grateful for. I would get outside and get sunlight, direct sunlight. There's been studies that have shown, like, especially in the beginning of your day, if you get outside, it helps your circadian rhythm, but just like fresh air and sunlight is so good for you. Um, I would move my body. Again, my first pregnancy, I was not working out like I wanted to. I wasn't lifting weights. I wasn't doing cardio, but I would get outside and go on walks, long walks, and that really helped me. Um, and I surrounded myself with positive people. My husband, of course, but friends and family that were there, and they would pour those positive words into me that I couldn't give myself in that moment. So those are just a few small things that helped me not get sick stuck in the depression. I think it's important to feel our feelings and acknowledge them. But one of the analogies that Daniel and I use and say very often is, you know, what do you say to someone that is in the middle of a storm? It's thunder and lightning and complete downpour and they're getting drenched and they just feel like there's no way out. We tell them to keep moving. 
there will be sun at the end of the storm. There will be a beautiful sunny day. You just have to keep moving through it. So instead of just sitting down and like letting it pour all over you, experience it, acknowledge your feelings, acknowledge what you're going through and keep moving once you've had those moments of acknowledgement. That's what I had to do. Daniel, let me cry as much as I needed to cry. I got it out. I feel like it's it's almost like watering your soul. Like you have to let the tears out. Don't hold them in. It's not healthy to hold it in. Let it all out, but then keep moving. Get all the tears out that you can and then step outside and get some fresh sunlight. For me lately, like different drinks have been something that brings me joy. Like let me go to Starbucks and get a pink drink or let me go to my favorite place and get a green juice. So whatever it is that makes you happy. Maybe it's playing with your dog, getting outside, going on a walk, going to church, reading a book, like know what you have in your life that can bring you joy and choose to do that once you've processed your feelings and emotions. Um, and that will help you not get stuck. At least that's what helped me not get stuck. I experienced it and then I kept moving on. So that was prenatal depression. Like what the heck? Who knew? Who knew that that was even a thing? I didn't know. I'm going to talk a little bit about my postpartum depression experience, which I actually did not have with Asher. So kind of moving forward in the timeline, I had prenatal depression and I told my doctor about it. And if it was something that I felt like I was not able to move out of at all, She was ready to give me medication. There is medication that is pregnancy safe to help you if you're experiencing like really, really dark thoughts. Again, my thoughts were positive, but my feelings were negative, um, if that makes sense. So my doctor told me I needed to really be aware because it was more likely I was going to also experience postpartum depression. We had Daniel on lookout. My mom was with us. She was on lookout. Everybody was kind of like keeping an eye on me to make sure I didn't slip into postpartum depression. And if I did, we would get doctor's help. After Asher, I did not. I was great. Life was good. Baby snuggles were the best. Living my best life, my best postpartum life. So I'm very grateful that I didn't experience <laughs> it during pregnancy and after pregnancy. I got one and not the other. Cut to my pregnancy with the twins. I had no depression. I was actually in peace that was not explainable. Like we were dealing with some really scary stuff and we had people praying for us. And I was able to stay in a place of peace even through scary moments. And so I didn't experience postpartum depression with Asher. I was like, cool, I'm going to be good after giving birth to the girls. I don't know if it was the girl hormones or giving birth to twins and making more hormones and then dropping more hormones, but goodness gracious, woo, postpartum depression hit me hard. One in eight have experienced postpartum depression. So if you are a mother or you have a mama in your life, you've probably seen it or experienced it yourself. It's wild how these hormones hit you out of nowhere you are sad. You can't get out of bed. And if you've watched the Valley, y'all may or may not have seen a little expression of my postpartum hormones. I've seen it on the comment threads on like Facebook and Instagram and all of that. People know that that's what I was experiencing. I've seen some people on the first episode when Daniel gets pants comment like, what? She's overreacting. Why is she being so dramatic? Oh my gosh, she's so stupid. But then about 50 people after that respond to that comment saying, obviously she's experiencing some type of postpartum hormone. She just gave birth to like the first episode, guys, we were five weeks after giving birth. So of course I was experiencing all of the emotions. You're way more sensitive. Let's actually hit one hormonal crazy drop that I don't even think I've talked with Daniel about. And so right after giving birth, I am you know, have the babies, they're in their own little like units, they're in their little like um, bassinets. And the nurse and Daniel are helping me move from the bed to the wheelchair. And they're going to wheel us to like the recovery room. Um, I still have an epidural. So they're like helping me because I'm like, my legs feel like jello. I don't have enough strength yet. And before I get off the bed, I am like hyperventilating crying. 
And it felt like out of nowhere because my birth was incredible. We were like dancing to Shania Twain and like living our best lives. The babies were happy. They latched right away. Like I wish I could like, I wish we had that moment on camera. I wouldn't have wanted anyone to record in the moment. But now looking back, it was insane sadness and tears. Like I said, hyperventilating, crying. And I was just, I felt like I was feeling a massive hormone drop. Like it was just chemical, everything crazy. And I had that right after birth. And I feel like that maybe should have been my my first sign that I might experience postpartum depression. So I don't think we have to go into depth on postpartum depression. Most people know what it is. If you're one of the one in eight women, you've experienced it, or you might've had a friend in your life experience it. But long story short, throughout, I would say the first four months after giving birth, that's how long I felt like it really hit me. And we were filming for two of the four months, but uh, the first four months I would be hit by waves. It was not all the time, all day, every day. I would wake up sad and end the day sad. That's not what my experience was, but there were big chunks of the day or there were moments where it would hit me and sit for a while and then I could get out of it. But I had moments where I couldn't get out of bed because I would wake up and be immediately sad and dark and heavy with my emotions and my feelings. And then there were moments where I'd be having a great day and it would kind of be circumstantial. I maybe would be in a stressful environment. Hmm. Wonder, wonder where that might have happened. So my my experience overall was just sad, not a little bit circumstantial, a little bit chemical. And that's pretty much all it was. You guys, I think if you've had it or experienced it or know someone's experienced it, it is possible to get through. We will all get through it. There's medication. There's physical things that you can do, which I already explained for the prenatal. And I want the one message for anyone listening to here is that you will get through it. It does not last forever and it is not your new normal. That was one of my thoughts when I would experience it so frequently was, do I have to live like this for the rest of my life? And I truly thought that this was just who I was and what my life was going to be like. And I'm going to have to figure out how to get through life this way. And postpartum depression is not your new normal and you will get through it. And I want everybody to know that because I know that was probably one of the heaviest thoughts for me. It was like, I don't think I'm ever going to get out of this. And I just thought I would have to live life like it, but you don't, and you will get through it. So hold on to that piece of hope, that little glimmer, speaking of glimmers, We'll wrap up this little portion of the podcast with a glimmer. A glimmer is something beautiful, something happy, something, a little moment of joy. And as you're experiencing life and a lot of your day might be sad, hold on to glimmers and know that they will get you through until your life feels bright again. So your child cooing, your baby smiling for the first time. If you're like me and you have a toddler running around, you're a toddler making up a silly song or doing a silly dance, try to zoom out in that moment, see that joyful moment, be filled with it, and hold on to those glimmers until you get to the other side of your postpartum depression because you will get to the other side. Okay, we will take a quick little break and come right back with lighter and funner topics. Welcome back from the break. We are going to wrap up this episode with some like hot topics, pregnancy, postpartum edition. All right. And we're kind of tying into the show a little bit, but it's like whether it's the show or you're going back to, well, nobody else is doing a show like we are, but we filmed a show. Essentially, that's for us like most women going back to work. A lot of women go back to work postpartum. So first question is, how were you getting enough sleep postpartum? while filming the reality show, or for you guys, while going back to work. It is wild. I honestly think America needs a better healthcare system. This is just for like anybody going back to work, where we get at least three months, four months, because around four months, you can help babies like start sleeping better. The first two months are wild. wild. Like you don't get any sleep. Um, 
one tip that worked really great for me is instead of thinking, oh, I'm putting the baby down, baby's asleep, and I'm trying to get a good night's sleep. I think I'm putting baby down and I'm going to take a nap. If I look at my night as full of little naps, then it's no big deal when the baby wakes me up in an hour and a half from when I just closed my eyes because, hey, I got a great little nap and now I'm up with the baby again. So if you try to look at your night, at least for me, as full of naps instead of trying to get a lot of sleep, that can definitely help with the craziness. I would say the hardest thing for us while filming the show specifically is I think it's the pageant girl in me. Like this is called hold my crown. We all know that I have a, have had a crown. I want to present myself at least physically put together. So I wanted to put on makeup and do my hair and like look cute for filming. And that was oh, so hard to do when you're so sleep deprived because if I truly outside of the show have to choose between hair and makeup or more sleep, I'm going to choose more sleep. Like if I have a moment to sleep, I want to do that. So I had to really, and you'll see, I think we'll see what makes it in the show, but you'll see where after a while, I mean, if they put it in that I just, I don't try to be perfect anymore on camera. And I chose sleep very often, so you might see me with no makeup on, and that's okay because that is real life. I, in real life, if I have friends coming over, I'm not going to put makeup on because I don't have the time and I want to choose sleep over it. So, um, yeah, but the, the sleep at night. One thing that I will say that Daniel did that was so helpful, and if you have a partner out there, send this episode to them. If Daniel can have work in his real life and have the show that we're filming in real life as well, um, and he can do this, so can you. We were a team at night. Daniel would get up every single time the baby, or for us babies, woke up and change a diaper, bring the baby to me. I would nurse the baby and then get the next baby and change a diaper and bring the baby to me. When it's one baby, I feel like most people out there have one baby. It's a lot easier for the guy. He gets up, changes the diaper, gives the mama the baby, and goes right back to bed. Easy peasy. With two, no. And Daniel, funny fact, fun fact, Daniel needs more sleep than I do. I need sleep, but I think I can handle sleep deprivation a little bit better than him. And it just like really hits him hard when he's not well rested. So with two babies, He would change the diapers, give me the babies. He would kind of doze off. But the minute that they're done feeding, he has to sit right back up because he has to burp a baby and then I have to burp a baby. And then we kind of make sure they're fully asleep and then put them back in the bassinet. So he wouldn't ever be able to fully fall asleep until the girls were back to bed. And nursing windows are 30 to 45 minutes for newborns. So you are up for 30 to 45 minutes sometimes nursing, changing diapers, nursing, and then burping and putting them back down. It's a whole situation. I was used to doing the rest of it on my own with Asher, but with twins, Daniel was 100% a part of it. So it's nice to have a partner support. If you can afford it, get a night nurse one to two nights a week. We got a night nurse. It was wildly expensive. I would say probably eight times in the first four months, but we needed it. And I wish we had the finances to be like, sure, let's get a night nurse like two to three nights every single week, but it's so expensive. So when we had a really big morning or Daniel had like an eight hour work day, we would get a night nurse so that he could like go to work and I could get a restful night's sleep and then be up to take care of the kids. So it was wild. Um, Okay, more questions. But yeah, that was kind of sleep, sleep deprivation, filming the show or for you guys going back to work. Um, Ooh, I love this next question. How do you prioritize self-care while juggling the demands of motherhood and filming? Self-care is my jam. So let me tell you, if you are listening and you are a new mom or you're a partner of a new mom, anybody out there, self-care is so important. When a mother is well-rested and happy, the health of the family thrives, okay? So let me give you a list. I would say after Asher and after the girls, I would take a bath almost every night. And that was like my whole like self-care moment 
for a solid hour. Like, obviously, you put Asher to bed, get the girls cozy, snuggling on Daniel or my mom if she was here helping. Whoever We had people helping the first few, I would say, two to three months. We needed it. We have a toddler and twin babies. Um, so I would escape to, like, the bathroom was my my little retreat and I would do an Epsom salt bath with a bath bomb and oils and do like skincare and hair care. So wherever you can find time for self-care, do it. Can you do it at home for one hour while the house is kind of quiet? Make it a priority, make it happen. Um, my mom, because she knows that I love a good Manny Petty would make sure that at least once a month I would get out for a Manny Petty. I got a massage. I had, ooh, here's a great thing. So if it's something that's accessible and affordable in your community, I actually had a masseuse that would come to the house. And there's a very wide variety of price points across Los Angeles. I have reached out to someone that I found through like a social, someone tagged her on social media and said, hey, this person does massage. Here, here's her phone number, book her. I think it was like $250 for an in-home massage. And like, sure, maybe that's affordable for some people, but like I'd rather spend that on groceries. You know what I'm saying? But self-care is important. So I found someone where I did a package deal and got a group of massages and it averaged out to be around, I think, $95 a massage, which is actually more affordable than going to some spas in, a, well, most spas in LA. Long story long, postpartum and prenatal, Self-care is so important because it aids in the overall like mental and emotional health for the mama. And when mama is feeling good, everybody else is feeling good. One little thing that I want to share that just came to mind right now is if you are a breastfeeding mother or you are a husband that is supporting a husband or wife that's supporting a breastfeeding mother um, or a mom, anybody like my mom was with us. Anytime that mama sits down to breastfeed the babies, ask her what you can get her. A snack, water, some type of hydration, because while babies are drinking, mama should be drinking something that has electrolytes or protein shake or water, anything. But it's so important to keep, keep the mother well hydrated and lots of nutrition so that she can produce for her babies. We are gonna answer one more question and then wrap it on up. All righty. What challenges did we face in adjusting to life with a newborn while being in the spotlight? I think for me, the biggest challenge was how I want to like portray myself. Because if you follow me on Instagram, real Nia Sanchez, um, I share everything as I'm experiencing, like shortly after I'm experiencing it. So if I'm crying from a postpartum depression, like wave, I'm not going to share it in the moment. I'm going to process it. And then I'm going to share it, which I did. You guys saw that on my Instagram. If you were following me in real time, when I was experiencing moments, I would share what I experienced or breastfeeding. If I'm like going through something like this is what works for me. I kind of like, I experience it first and then I share it. Whereas when you're filming a reality show, it's being filmed and essentially shared in real time. So if you guys are watching the show or have watched the show or you're listening to this a year from now and you watch it, you watch it back, everything that you see is shared in real time, essentially. It's recorded in real time and just put on the air versus when I share on social media, I have time to process and then share. So I think that's something that's really good that is essentially like a storyline that maybe hasn't really been done before or in a long time. It was fresh after giving birth and, and the cameras were right there. So it's just everything that we, we were processing in the real life moment. Um, it'll be, I think it'll be beautiful and raw to watch back as the weeks progress, as we continue to watch the episodes, because yes, it was hard, but I'm glad that I was able to be vulnerable and be raw because those moments so many women experience, but from my personal experience, prenatal with Asher, even the things I experienced postpartum with Asher and postpartum with the girls, it feels isolating. There would be moments where I'm with, whether it's my girlfriends outside of the show or while we were filming, and 
I was able to open up to them. But until I did, no, my friends don't know what I'm going through. So I felt very isolated um, with those emotions and those feelings. And I just had to like, you know, let it all, what is it on your sleeve? Bear it all, bear my heart on my sleeve, something like that. Wear my heart on my sleeve. There we go. I had to wear my heart on my sleeve and just really share everything in real time as it was happening with the spotlight now. Something that we're experiencing with the girls and the kids is for me, just like how much do we want to share them? We share them on our Instagram. Obviously, we share them on the show, but we just kind of want to find that healthy balance of we love our kids and we love sharing how wonderful they are, but letting them be a part of our life without like forcing them into it. Cause they're at the age where they don't get to choose to be on TV. We're choosing it for them. So we just want to create a really good, healthy balance, which I think we did. The show is mostly about us couples, but also about the real life of like raising kids and all that. So you see a little bit, but it's not too much. And then same with even the girls are on TV shows right now. They actually booked another show and I don't think I can say it because I read like you know, the privacy clause. But in a few months, we'll let you guys know that the girls are on a new show plus young Sheldon, which they've been on for a while and is airing. So we're just kind of like picking and choosing like where we want to let the girls and Asha be in the spotlight and the entertainment industry and protecting them. It's kind of like a balance that we're trying to create. But we're going to wrap up today's episode. Thank you for hanging out with me allowing me the space and listening to this space of sharing my postpartum experience. I hope you got some tips and tricks when it comes to postpartum, breastfeeding, prenatal, all of the things. It's just a wild ride that we experience as mothers. I know that any mama out there can understand and relate. Um, As we wrap up this episode, make sure you subscribe, you share this podcast on social media to your friends and family. Make sure to tag Hold My Crown Podcast and Real Nia Sanchez, Hold My Crown dot podcast and Real Nia Sanchez so that we can reshare your shares. And I'm so glad you're here. I'll see you next week. We're going to have some fun guests lined up. We have our castmates from the show that are going to be on the podcast. We have an incredible fertility expert. And most recently when I posted about fertility on Instagram, I received hundreds of responses. So I'm very excited for a fertility expert that's coming on. It's going to be fun. Keep checking back in every single Wednesday to hear a new episode of the Hold My Crown podcast. I will see you guys next week and have a wonderful day. Bye. Yay Networks.